there. Welcome to Women at the Frontline. On this episode, we're excited to be hosting you again. My name is Monica Moding. And on this program, our duty really is to bring to you stories of inspiration of women who have impacted the world and continue to change the world in different ways, in different sectors they are in. But also we hope we can inspire you with any of their stories to live your life uh, in a better way, but more impactful life uh, wherever you are. And of course, as women leaders, we are hoping that through these stories, we shall make a case on why we need more women uh, to spread out in various sectors. Of course, adding value to society and making a case on why we need more women in uh, these spaces. Because indeed, where women are, there is value addition, there is change, there is transformation in society. And to share her story today is a very exciting, exceptional young woman, uh, Cynthia Mpanga, who is going to walk us through her journey. And of course, through her journey, we'll be able to pick a few things here and there that can inspire us and also keep us going in our lives and in our journeys of leadership and impact. Thank you so much for being here with us, uh, Cynthia. Thank you for having me. And welcome. Thank you very much. You know, you are this kind of person you watch from a distance and you're like, wow, how is she able to do all these things and be able to do the things she does? And of course, Cynthia, for many of the people that do not know you, I am going to give you that opportunity to introduce yourself. But from what I was reading in terms of your profile, I was so amazed. I said, wow, Thank 18 you. years in uh, uh, <laughs> social corporate affairs and many other things. I think probably I've messed it up because I'm not a professional in that area. But you are going to be almost one of my first guests from the corporate world. And it's such an honor. It is. <laughs> it's such an honor, honorable. And also a professional yes. in, in, in the setting of public relations. Correct. Yeah, so I'll just walk with you in the journey of your life. I know I have not introduced you. I, I think I'll do it as we have that conversation. So in, in terms of uh, just, I know you are a public relations person. A lot probably is known about you. But there are those things that we rarely talk about that people may not know when they see this flashy woman <laughs> they don't know where she has come from Correct. and yes. the type of life she has led so maybe we start from there uh, so you can get comfortable yes. okay so mm -hmm. first and foremost it's such an honor thank you so much for having me for mm -hmm. hosting me and it's such a great honor and privilege that i'm the first corporate of person course. you're hosting and i'm hoping so, you will help us get more women yes out definitely there. i know so many people yeah, so definitely inspire us yes yeah, yeah. um there's a lot to tap into mm -hmm. and for me uh what's very exciting is that we have so many challenges yeah. with our labor uh, labor force mm. and so many people so many businesses so many entrepreneurs their one biggest challenge is human resource wow and therefore we have a story to tell mm. we have an angle to bring to the conversation in terms of what can we do as a country to transform the mindset the attitude the work ethics the business ethics of our society because we can't keep having foreigners coming in and leading all the Top positions. top positions and then we have so many people i remember the ura uh was it uh is it you boss or mm. ura who put out a research you that boss. said mm. uh less it's only like one percent less what was it like less than one percent and one million yes above and above who boss yeah. Oh my goodness, mm, the, the that statistic mm. was so shocking for me mm. because I'm like, can you even imagine 47 million human beings in Uganda? In Uganda, and only one percent, and more than that means we don't have a middle we class. We don't have. We don't have. That means we are so broke <laughs> and <laughs> poor. Did you hear the president <laughs> saying we are now in the middle income economy? Maybe that's a discussion we'll get that's in another day. That's a story for another Before day. Before we get there, I would like just to capture you, the young Cynthia. Yes. Because you see, life has positioned us in different ways. Yes, it has. Other people may be born into this family, and we, are, we call them those who are born with silver spoons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, life just begins very well for them. And all they have to do is to prove mm. to their family that, yes, I am one of the kind. Yes. Whereas others 
they really have to break so many barriers to get to where they are. And so that kind of, you know, inspiration is very important. For you, how did your life begin? Because there could be someone who is watching and say, but how does it take to get to a position where you are right now as a, a manager of corporate affairs in a very big bank, Standard Chartered Bank? And for how, 20 years. And for 20 <laughs> years. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot you can share. Yes. But bring us from that point. How was it for you growing up? It was, was it this aristocratic <laughs> family growing up very easily and then, you know, or was it like mine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. so that's a brilliant question. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for asking, for asking it, largely because we are all shaped and we are who we are as a result of our background, Absolutely. you know. So mm. it's such a critical question because it shapes where I am yeah. today and yeah. my mindset and mm. attitude and mm. all that. So. To start off with, I grew up in a family, in a rather big family, to a man who was very extravagant, who was rich, in a wealthy family. Ooh. Okay, so my late father, uh, the late Charles Herbert Mpanga, was uh, a politician, very mm. much a politician. Mm. He, um, he actually tried to fight Amin, a uh, guerrilla war. He had an army. Yeah, so... I have a background. I was born in exile because my father had to go to exile. So I wasn't wrong when I said aristocratic <laughs> because the Mpangas, for some reason, I feel like they are, uh, you know, royals yes. or something. Yeah, so mm. it's a huge clan. Uh, we are related to the, Ham, the late Ham Walusimbis. Mm. To, so the lineage is quite big quite and big. Uh, we are all spread out. Oh, yeah. But um, we come from a family that was very solid, very grounded. But as fate would have it, of course, at some point in 1998, 1999, both of our parents passed on eight so, months between each other. Both parents? Correct. Ooh. Yeah, so that was a very tragic uh, time in our lives. It was very sudden. It was unexpected, uh, unprepared for. I, I was in my senior six vacation personally, though I have many siblings of mine who are a lot older and some who are younger than me, but it was a very, very trying and testing moment in our lives. It was transformative. It changed everything about our lives. Because uh, mm. we woke up and uh, we were practically lost and broken Ooh. and totally floored. So much so that we didn't have electricity, we didn't have water, uh, we didn't have water, mm. we didn't have any of the basic resources mm. that we took mm. for granted wow. for so many years, mm. including, of course, not having school fees. Mm. Yes, so it was very, very tragic. Uh, and I remember me having to go to visit my brother, who was uh, called Goloba Rodney, he works now in, UR, uh, in PAO, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, mm. he's a lawyer, but back then, uh, we were studying in, he was studying in Deje, senior secondary school, by the way. And when our parents died, we couldn't afford school fees, but because he was the head boy, the school decided Offered to him. sponsor mm. yeah, and give him a bursary. Oh, wow. But can you imagine what he would have done because he would have just literally dropped, dropped out, out yeah. you know? It's the story of many orphans. Correct. Yeah. So it mm. was a very challenging time in our lives. And, uh, but, uh, and I'll tell you, I, we were so floored. I went and lived in, uh, Rubaga, Kabusu, wow. in a slum there wow. of one room. And before your parents passed on, where were you people living? Well, we were living on Entebbe Road, uh, Busabala Road, Masaja. Uh -huh. So my grandfather, he owned so much land in Masaja. Mm. And we used, to, all my relatives are there from my maternal side. So that's where we had our family home growing wow. up. Wow. But yes, uh, we all had to, the world sort of absorbed, absorbed. us and dissolved well. us. Mm. And we all found our bearings. Wow. So wow. yeah, wow. rugs <laughs> to reach a story. I well, I, I think it's a middle, middle ground. And when you're speaking about that experience, personally, I went through that. But you, you are challenging us to think of life uh, for our families, our children where you bring up your family in such a way that your parents did. But all of a sudden, they have to face a different life. I wonder how many parents prepare their children for that kind of, of things, because you will not that's, be here forever. That's quite interesting. <laughs> I is. think that one very hmm. fundamental thing that was different about my growing up or my training mm. from my parents, yeah. 
was one, my parents took trouble to really expose me, mm -hmm. you know, mm. and all of us in different ways. Okay. But it was a very grounding lesson because I remember my father from a very young age telling me that you should hold your own. You are exceptional. You are intelligent. Aww. You are, you can do anything you, you, do anything. you choose to do. You know, he, he kept wow. repeating mm. and to me, my value, my worth in society. Mm -hmm. And I remember he used to even tell me that, listen, um, let me take you, eat all the chips and chicken, <laughs> the chips and liver, whatever it is you want to eat so that you do not base your value on someone buying you such you oh, know yeah. cheap mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you sell your life or oh, trade yeah? your life for mm -hmm. that so and the other thing is i remember when he was actually about to die and he was very very weak he reminded me and said you know i've lived a good life i've uh I've built homes wow. in Bogolobi, everywhere wow. Wow. Uh, but just remember that i came to this city without anything mm -hmm. from the village mm -hmm. i came walking mm and I made it. Wow. So do not look at any of my property, any of my wealth, because I can't promise you what is going to happen. Wow. Yes. So you prepared you people. Yes. Hmm. But he said, hmm. but you have to go into the world and you have to make it on your own. On your own. <laughs> on your own. And he said uh, a statement that oh my gosh, jacks me out of my victim mode. <laughs> and every and time slumber. I feel like I'm, I'm falling down and on my knees. Okay. He said it in Luganda, and I don't know how to interpret it correctly in English, but let me give it a shot. Mm. He said, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. he's like, go out, face the world. Don't play victim. Don't take uh, prisoners or something Captives. like that. Mm. Yeah, just mm. fight to the Confront teeth. Confront the world. And I wow. think that was a very... That, that, that was a very uh, powerful parting shot from your parents. Because you see, parents of today, we are challenged to teach our children or rather show them the thorns yeah. of the world. Because when we give them everything that we have, we take them to these good schools, we do whatever is possible to make their lives easier Easy. this time. Yeah. But then we must also show them the other side of the world because the world is not as easy as it no, seems it's not. For, for. so you are this child who has grown up in a very good family and then suddenly life throws at you that challenge how i mean that process that life those moments how did you move uh, onwards in terms of uh, confronting the challenges before you and family that's an ev an ending journey mm -hmm. It's a journey of continuous self-discovery, mm. of understanding who you are, mm -hmm. regardless of what the world tells mm. you. No matter what challenges confront, you have to confront, mm. you have got to understand first and foremost, what grounds you is your understanding and belief in yourself. Wow. You cannot wait on everybody to reassure you, to praise you, mm. for you to stand with your head mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. In fact, the world doesn't owe us anything. Anything. Nothing. Wow. wow. So you, people will beat you down. The world will beat you up. It's so bad. So bad. That if you lose who you are mm. in your own mm. mind mm. and mm. you do not take time to invest in understanding who you are and the build the right framework that will support your growth or your survival, then it is a law of the jungle out there. <laughs> you will be swallowed alive. <laughs> Eh? Wow. You'll be on your own, you'll be swallowed. So it's very, very important to be grounded to and be grounded. understand who you, who are, you are and who have goals mm -hmm. and to be focused mm -hmm. and to be passionate wow. about your goals. Wow. If people tell you you cannot do it, listen to them. They're entitled to their opinion. I mean, that doesn't... Yeah, very interesting points you make. And I'm now looking at this young orphan girl who has to confront this very hostile world. And she has to live, study, continue, get to this career that she's been at and impact the impact that you have in society. So for someone who is out there is wondering, how did she make it? From which point to which point? So how did school, for example, continue uh, okay. without the parents? And then how did you okay. get to your early career before we get to where you are right now? Okay, so mm. my journey really is, uh, I was in a six vacation 
I had applied, I wanted to do mass communication at Makere mm. University. And um, <laughs> I'm laughing because part of what I'm going to say is uh, uh, I didn't get in Makere, so I got in Chambogo. And because a I, government scholarship, you mean? Yes, yeah. correct. Mm. But my dream was to do mass com communication in, in Makere. So Ooh. I never ever saw myself doing you know, not doing that. So I honestly didn't have career guidance. I was left on my own. Uh, later on, foresight, I said I should have taken that up. It was free, but no, I didn't. Mm. Mm. What I did is go look for jobs, uh -huh. to look for tuition. Mm to go and study mass communication. Which you wanted. Kid. Exactly. No, I think it was about knowing who you are. And <laughs> but you guess wanted what? To be in life. I mean, the first job I had, and I was working in my vacations, um, helping out my auntie, Harriet Jackson, in her boutiques and so on. Mm. But the first job I really had was at uh, Serena, but as like an office manager helping out, mm. uh, organizing things for you know a lady who used to do a lot of training mm. so she used to do a lot of uh, customer care training and so on it was a personal business and i was earning fifty thousand you can let you learn so that in involved me having to work because i need to save for my education that was in your senior six vacation yeah before you all started. the way yes but also oh, yeah. yeah yeah so but uh anyways i managed to apply and get a placement at mobs mm -hmm. which wasn't no Okay, before I moved to MOBS. Mm. So I enrolled at Makere University. Mm. I was going to miss a very critical part. I enrolled at Makere University. On a private scholarship now? Yes. Okay. On hoping that I'll be able to make and raise the tuition. Ah. And um, I dropped out uh, because, of course, I failed to pay the money. And uh, when I failed to pay, I went into a very deep depression mm. for the first time in my life. Mm. I, I remember I used to sleep on a small mattress on the floor. I was having nightmares. I was so discouraged. It felt like my life had was come to, to a end. screeching mm. end. Mm. I was disappointed. I was lost. I was very, very lost. I remember sleeping endlessly and not waking up and feeling like I shouldn't even wake up. <laughs> I was just lying there, not eating, not showering. Mm. I, I really went through a depression and I didn't even know yeah. that I was going through a depression at the time I was going through it. Everyone does go through that, I think. And to Moments. make matters worse, mm. I collect myself, pick myself up. I, I, tell, I tell myself, let me go visit my brother. It's visitation. He has no one to visit him. And then I get a car accident, a terrible car accident. I pass through a windshield at the front. And then my whole skin ah. on my forehead came off. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Who would believe that? I know, right? Hi. And I have a very terrible skin. Mm -hmm. It grows keloids, yes, right? Yes, yes. I knew for sure this is it. This like is I it. have no face. Mm -hmm. I have no money. Mm. I couldn't take myself to hospital. So I used to actually put toilet paper just put toilet paper. I was in a one bedroom uh, house in Rubaga. I didn't have money to go to hospital. I didn't have anyone to turn to. I was on my on own. On your own. I don't even know <laughs> how that wound <laughs> healed. I have no idea. And it healed and didn't leave a horrible scar. My God. I have no idea. It's just by the grace you of God. You have a story, woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Moving on. Mm. So, after that, I, I dropped out and then I, I was like, let me first look for work, then recoup my resources, mm -hmm. then try again. Mm, mm, so mm. I, I went through that process again. I, I started working, looking for old jobs and so on and so forth. And then my auntie said, listen, uh, how about you do this thing you've always wanted to do, mm. but go and find a very cheap, affordable, affordable. place. Oh, yeah. And then I'll mm. see what I can do. Mm. So mm. I went uh, to Umkat, mm -hmm. Uganda uh, Media uh, uh, so, you know, it's an institution. Okay. Yeah, mm. it, it's a journalism mm. school. Mm. Sorry, uh, the, the, the most the popular one, I going, think, goes yeah. out mm. of my head. Mm. But back then, we were, we were paying school fees of 100000 a term. Mm. So my auntie said, that's affordable. I'll pay that. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. So I went and did my first diploma course in journalism mm -hmm. at UMCAT. And then um, when I finished doing that, then I volunteered at Uganda Red Cross, for three months in the comms department. And while I was doing that, 
Uh, and remember, I, I told you about my experience with customer care training mm, and so on. Mm. Uh, one of my aunties called me and she said, listen, I've heard that Standard Charter Bank has jobs oh, yeah. for tellers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a diploma. Mm. Why don't you go and try that, that out? Okay. And uh, back then to be a teller, you didn't need very high qualifications uh -huh. and so on and so forth. Okay. So I went in there and I tend to be very confident. So <laughs> I can see. <laughs> so when I got in there, I, they started asking me customer service questions. Remember, I was always preparing materials, going to, oh, you know, huge offices. You see? Yes, I'll go to parliament and be at the back. You mm. know, you're the one who collects feedback oh, forms yes. and things like that. Yeah. And I was really, really like informed. Yeah. So when they started asking me hypothetical questions mm. of how would you handle this? How would you? I was just on a roll. Wow. I even forgot it was an interview. <laughs> I just got in there and just nailed that. This I was young so full woman. of energy. Yeah. Yeah, so when they were done, they said, let's just find this one a job. Wow. And she's not going to be a tailor. This one is a service person. So wow. they made me a flow ambassador. So I used to wear a sash uh -huh. and walk around welcoming, uh, you know, clients of Standard this Chattered Bank. This is now at Standard Picron. Chattered Bank. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I would welcome, you know, customers at the reception. Mm. One, mm. And then they started training me on all the desks of service. Mm -hmm. And I thoroughly enjoyed that job. But I used to stand from eight to five in the evening yes and there was no breaks <laughs> i hear lunch you know people these days are so privileged it's so interesting and a bit lazy i think yes yeah but people. i tell mm. you what when i felt like i couldn't stand anymore or i was so exhausted i what i did i i found a way to relax my mind and to have fun doing the job. Mm. So what I would do, every customer would come in, I would chat them up. Yeah. I would say, so what's outside there? How is, you know, what's going on? Do you know, then they would tell you stories and so on. So I made so many <laughs> friends keep up the to day today. Going. Oh. They are like really my friends. And mm. they were all exceptional people because wow. our clientele are very exceptional people. Well, I could see you were positioned at a very good place because then your character and then being able to meet these people, yes. it must have taken new places. You were actually implementing what pub public relations is all about yes I right did. from that point imagine that yeah. uh, without actually intending to i just love people mm. and i really believe in the goodness of humanity so i see the best in everybody i meet wow. and i try to look for the best in them mm. even if they are not mm. trying mm. to be very nice mm -hmm. so what i did was really uh do a lot of that and then what someone gave me advice which was very useful i think the best two advisors people gave me when i joined the working corporate world one was from a lady who was in her over, you know, 40s, very beautiful, but never had, uh, never gotten married mm -hmm. and no children. Mm. So her advice while I was working late, which is something I've done for so long, for so long. was mm. that do not forget to focus on your life and your social life. Don't forget yourself because money and career isn't everything. It's not enough. So make well. time mm. to meet your friends, mm -hmm. to meet people, to get married and to start your own family. Wow. Because time flies mm -hmm. and you will not really see fast. it go. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That is something I kept on top of my mind and it frightened me so much because <laughs> even then it was like past 9 p.m. and we were working late with her in the back Ooh. office and she saw me already. Going this for young them. person Correct. working so much. That was very wow. useful wow. advice. Mm. The second advice someone gave me was like, you need to be more intentional and sharp mm -hmm. about what your input and output is in this world. Ah. So don't just do walk things. Around. Mm -hmm. Walk around. Walk mm. around, talk to people, help them. You need to quantify. Whatever ah. you quantify, whatever you can measure, you whatever you, you can like sort of keep uh, uh, tabs on mm. and measure mm. that you can sort of justify in and, front of everybody and love it as well correct you, know. mm. you basically it's about measuring your impact mm -hmm. so what i did i got a book so i decided instead of just chatting to customers i'm going to sell so what i did is i would just ask oh so you have a bank account with us oh do you know there's this product there's also that you know you know, and someone will say, I'm just an agent. I just walked in here and say, 
can you believe people say that we are an expensive bank, but we're actually not the most expensive bank. That's what I think. You just need to get the right product for mm -hmm. yourself because they are products for different people. So some people take the wrong products and they think that, oh, I was charged. Why did you take an, a, a current account when mm. you needed a savings mm. account? So I started like educating them and they're like, yeah. Wow. You mean, you mean so? They are charging me on the current account. On the savings account, they don't charge me. I'm like, yes, you just took the wrong product. So then I started opening accounts for mm. people and I would take note. I would say today uh, on this date, I opened accounts five worth. I would go much. and follow up with the salespeople and say, okay, so how much money did Have my I customers, uh -huh. you know, open mm. with? And mm. then I'll say, I open accounts worth this amount of money. Uh -huh. And I think my biggest account was one where I got a customer um, who was in the oil and gas industry to open an account which was like over a billion. I think wow. that is what was the game changer the for game me. Changer for you. So I confidently got my daughter, actually talked to <laughs> the head of consumer banking. He said, I think you have potential as a salesperson. I was Ooh. like, yeah. Then he was like, but you know, you're going to speak to the head of consumer banking who was a Ghanaian wow. and so my God revered, um, uh, he was an expatriate. And then he said, you need to speak to Francis Mills Robertson. Mm. Uh, he was a CEO of Equity at some at point. At that time. Equity after he left Standard Chartered Bank. So he said, you need to go talk to him and tell him your story and tell him what you can do and ask for, you know, another wow. placement away from, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just loving your story. So, so, so much. much. And I tell you, the lesson out of that mm. is do not wait for the world to hand you opportunities. That's mm. not how it works. Mm. No, You not put at up all. your hand, mm -hmm. you work for it, mm. and you take a leap of faith. Wow. And you just push walls Ooh. and boundaries. Because nobody, you'll be thinking, oh, let me work hard. Everybody will we'll recognize see. my hard work. Uh -huh. And you stay in the same place yeah. endlessly. Mm -hmm. And then you feel frustrated. So you take ownership of your destiny. Mm. Nobody should be there spoon feeding you. I hear identifying talent. And pushing there you. There are 45 million people you're waiting <laughs> for your talent to be discovered. Who has time Who to has discover time? your talent? You must show case yourself. There are cases unless you are a footballer or something and you're exceptional. But even then you mm. have to showcase mm. your talent. So anyway. That's uh, so powerful. Very, very powerful. Thank you. Cynthia, your story is almost making me cry. Oh, really? Yeah, it's already. okay. We can share a tissue and then we, uh, we'll okay. go through the mo yes. motions. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so I walked through Francis Mills's office. Mm. He was, oh my goodness, a larger than life figure in our bank. Uh, and I remember uh, David Cutting uh, was the CEO. I still keep in touch with the CEO who hired me. He's in the US, he's a, a black American. And I'm friends with all of them. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, power of networking. Yeah. I guess, yeah. you know, it's Social true, capital, that's it's true what they about. say. Your network is mm -hmm. your network. Is, is your network. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, mm. I walked in there. He literally bullied me. I mean, listen, these guys are the top. You don't just walk around saying, oh, I think I'm good enough. Add me money. And this is the corporate world we are talking about. Uh, it's a cutthroat it's, industry. Yeah. It's not for weaklings. And I would love, it's a jungle. Of course, you are indirectly sharing your story as a woman. Usually that is the question that comes up to me. And I'm like, how did this woman manage to make it in that very competitive industry? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're sharing exactly that. So. And I'm telling you, mm. and this part, I think... Uh, honorable is so important mm. because so many women have uh, an imposter syndrome of sorts. Mm -hmm. They don't believe they can do what they know they can do. Mm -hmm. They feel that even when they are there, they are not good enough. They are not worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, someone else is better than them. So you need encouragement, a lot of encouragement and a lot of people telling you, yeah, you're good. The day people don't say you're good, you feel like you're substandard. Oh. But who should... Why should you depend on other people? Why don't you, you create your me. own reserve ah. for your, the days when you're down? I wake up, I stand in the mirror, I tell myself, Cynthia, you are amazing. At the best. I am beautiful, mm -hmm. I am extraordinary, mm -hmm. I am intelligent. All I do not things. wait for people to tell me. To affirm uh -uh. to you. Mm. I affirm mm. and I speak the positives into my life and I create my destiny. And that for me, the funny thing is, I will come in this room, I get bashed, I walk into the bathroom, <laughs> I will cry, dry the tears, I will look at myself and I tell myself, today is a bad day, 
it is, I didn't get that right. Mm -hmm. It is okay. Mm -hmm. It is well. Failure means I tried. Wow. If I hadn't tried, I wouldn't have failed. Yeah. So I'm better than the person who, who hasn't is sleeping. Tried. Mm. Now it's all about picking myself up and trying again. Wow. And I will get there. there. And, and this I walk is the out, corporate world. And I walk back in there and I'll look at people in the faces mm -hmm. and I will continue. If From I was where you Yes. <laughs> you stop. I do not stop. <laughs> Okay, from the previous challenge to the current. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. So anyways, I walked into Francis Mills' uh, office mm -hmm. and he's a man who used to leave his door open and it was uh, an open floor <gasps> and there are all these managers just Ooh. sitting on the floor. Oh, oh, oh. Who just walked in? That floor girl. A floor girl. Yeah. Ah. So he's like, okay, what's your name? Who are you? What do you want? What, how can I help you? He, meanwhile, he's not looking at me. He's opening the drawers. He's Everything. looking at things, mm. but me. Mm -hmm. What do you want? How can I help you? Mm. What's your name? He asked me like five questions in, in one, one breath. I know. I sat there. I didn't know where to start. Mm. So I started uh, shaking. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Then he's like, what do what you want? What can I do for you? Then I pulled out my Jota, that book, <laughs> the magic book, <laughs> thanks to the advice. I was like, please look through. Um, I think I have potential. I am a good salesperson. I managed in January, I managed to bring in revenue. Uh, I of course prepared. Mm -hmm. um, in February, I managed to convince, you know, over 30 customers. The numbers have continued to grow. Right now, I managed to bring one account worth 1 billion shillings. I really believe that I'm able to be a, you know, a personal financial consultant oh. and I can add value in that space and so on and so forth. He say, let me see. And you gave him the file. Then I gave him, then he hmm. say, what makes you think this is enough for you to be promoted into a personal financial consultant? Ooh. It's like, next. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> corporate world. Yeah. The corporate world. Yes, Cut yes, yes. Competition. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Survival is for the fittest. Yes. So I walked out of there so mm -hmm. discouraged, I so know. embarrassed. Mm -hmm. He had been speaking on top of the, his voice. Everybody had heard. When I walked out of the office, everybody was looking at me. I was, oh my goodness, I feel like the floor should just open swallow and you. just swallow me there mm, and then. No way. So I walked back. Mm -hmm. So I went back to my workstation, did what I'm, I'm used to doing. And then there was this job that was advertised uh, internally uh, for corporate affairs officer. And I remember I kept telling my colleagues who had been in the same roles for like 10 years plus. I kept saying, I am going to apply for this job and no matter what, and people kept saying, no, mm. you know, those mm. jobs at that level, uh, it's so tight. You won't wow. get that job. Wow. You know, the naysayers, mm -hmm. they totally didn't believe in the ability for, the, for someone to grow organically, organically within the organization without a godfather. Uh -huh. idea. You need to those be are the someone, things someone. that women are challenged with all the time. I'm Carpet telling you, you cannot so make things. it yeah. unless you have done some magic. Mm, mm, mm. And I told myself, Okay, this is where I stop sharing my ambitions. Personal, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is another lesson. Ooh. You be careful who you speak to and who you take advice from on your journey. Ah. Because so many people will tell you you cannot, because literally they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in the opportunities. They don't believe in the greatness in, ah. within the world. So most people walk around with a mediocre mm -hmm. attitude, attitude and self-doubt mm. and disbelief in yeah, themselves yeah, so yeah. they are not even being bad they're actually projecting their own insecurities on you Ooh. so what happens is when you share your dream people will discourage you yeah wow so be careful very very careful mm. it is so important to have the right people speak into your life mm. even if it means you have to get mentors mm -hmm. you have to get a life coach mm -hmm. and i keep thinking of my life like that of a footballer wow Imagine this. Let me give you this example. Oh. Imagine Ronaldo, the best, best international in the world, that the God, most forward personality created, in yeah. the world. Mm. In his 30s, he's doing things of 20 year olds. Uh -huh. But this guy is still coached. Other people. No, he has a coach. Oh, 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 oh. He, he listens to a greater someone. Yeah. He has to submit himself to another and higher know. authority. I know wow. that in life you have to continue listening and learning and there's always someone better than, than you. you.
if you are in a room and you're the better the best person in that room you are in the wrong place yes. get out add your value challenge them add your input look for a room that grows you inspires you adds value to you Ooh. or challenges you wow fast forward this young woman, I just love your story. I think we could have part two. <laughs> really? Because then we are not going to exhaust your story yeah. right now in one hour. Yeah. Because then I have to hurry, you know. Yeah, we quickly. have to rush you know, through it. I need to hear this story. Okay, you yes. need to hear the end mm, of it. Let's take it so, step by step so we get the best out okay, of it. Okay, so mm. I'll, I'll try to keep my story very short yes. so we can put in as much as we can. Mm. So I then applied for this job. Mm. And the first interview was you are supposed to write a three and a half year plan proposal that actually was going to be implemented by Standard Chartered Bank Group. And that talks about the CSR activities of the bank and how we can influence, create impact in the community and transform lives. CSR, you mean? Corporate social responsibility, okay. mm, mm. Uh, community programs. Right. Some people call it sustainability okay. agenda. Mm, mm, mm. So that is what I had to do, write a three and a half year, uh, mm. year plan. Now, remember my role at the time, I used to work on the floor. I didn't have a laptop. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have, yeah. It's just like <laughs> moving around. This is a diploma person <laughs> being asked to do that. A proposal. Newly employed. Yes. My God. So guess what I did? Mm. So I had a friend of mine, <laughs> God bless his soul, um, who used to work in the monitor. He was a journalist. Mm. Uh, let me say his name. Mm -hmm. He's Angelo Izama. Oh, Izama. Yeah. Of course, that is like a... He's a very popular a person. demigod <laughs> in this industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's out of the country. So, Angelo played a very critical role mm. in my life. Mm. And uh, what I did is he said, you come up to my office eh, in the newsroom and then sit on my laptop as uh, we do other things. There are free laptops in the evening after work. And then you can do that. So, I'll finish work. Tired standing the whole day. I would literally have a chibol. Ha. I used to give the cleaners mm. a, a bowl to get me food. And then I would go back in at the end of the evening and I used to eat mostly posho. Oh, yeah. For strength. But, of course, you have to stand the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I used to eat a lot of posho uh -huh. and beans. And my friends used to laugh at me. I and do say, love posho and beans. They used to say, Odia Nyechi Wunga. And I was like, you know, I grew up uh, in boarding school and that's all I used to mm -hmm. eat. So I'm good with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I, and guess what? Mm. I used to eat that food, low end food, not low end. It's, it's very good nutritious. Food. It is. But I used to eat that because I was saving. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to university. Ah. And the minute my first salary, which was 500,000 back then, hit my account, pa. I went straight to MOOBS mm. and enrolled. For a degree now? Yes, for a degree. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and wow. I was studying in the evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So studying in the evening, I would finish work, run, run to, school. to school. Then I would go to new uh, monitor offices here in Amuongo, mm -hmm. sit up there, and I would work on the proposal until like past midnight, until every single day. That was my routine. Wow. I put my heart, and my soul. And remember you're I researched... doing it for the bank. Yes. It's not your personal doctor, document. Yes, or... but it was an inroad. Ah. You know, you know what they say about life? Mm. Every battle is won before it is fought. Mm -hmm. And this is through prepar preparation mm. and your mindset. Mm. You mm. know, you mm. prepare your mindset, you prepare psychologically, you talk to the right people, you get informed, you research, and then you go for your moment. Ooh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it, you know you did your best. Wow. So for me, I don't believe in mediocrity. I really have a problem with mediocrity mm -hmm. and therefore I put my heart and soul in everything. everything yeah. If I say I'm going to do something, mm -hmm. I give it 100%. Mm -hmm. If I say I will not do it, you will I not. don't touch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I explain politely, mm -hmm. these are my reasons. Mm -hmm. If you understand me, well and good. If you don't, it's okay as well. It is mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So that's what I used to do. So I prepared the, uh, the proposal, the proposal, mm -hmm. put it on a flash disk. Mm -hmm. Now, my biggest witness has always been last minute doing of mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. So I wait for the last day, the deadline day, to go put in my proposal into the laptop, download, send to the boss. Of course. My goodness. That is one of the worst lessons I've ever no, had in my life. you don't say. I expected, you know, some good news oh, at yeah, this point. You, wish. you know. You see, life is not a straight line. Uh -huh. There are so many unpredictabilities Tons. along the Your way. Path. Mm -hmm. You are 
challenged, life will just sort of like air you out until it proves <laughs> yeah. that you are worth it. I get you. So I uh -huh. walk into this uh, bank in the bank in the banking hall i asked for a laptop from one of my colleagues i put in the flash disk i download and lo and behold the the laptop the computer it just blinked and it blacked out <laughs> <laughs> we could end even here. i lost everything, everything. everything. <laughs> work of how many days and months of nights sleepless ah. nights every mm. single day mm. so let me tell you the lesson mm. out of this mm. Mm. so many people are beaten down mm -hmm. discouraged mm. they mm. fall down mm -hmm. and they feel that is it that is it the devil mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm being bewitched <laughs> this is oh, okay you know you find every reason mm -hmm. But the point is you have two choices every time mm -hmm. you, you are face such a down. challenge yeah. you can stay down mm -hmm. or get up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the uh, the branch where I put my uh, used to use the laptop <laughs> closes, yeah. The banking hall has to close. Wow. At, uh, at that time they were closing like seven thirty thereabout. Huh? So I had to find another laptop. I didn't have a laptop, and I had nothing. That what I had was that you know like how you you're starting working uh, framework, oh. and then. You kept researching and Different adding and adding. Kept but now the final document is nowhere. Nowhere. Oh my. So I called one of the guys who was in IT, panicking in tears. I'm like, Roland, I need your help. I need a laptop. I need to work, you know, on a presentation. It's life and death. Whatever he's like, Cynthia, I am already at home. I said, you need to come, come back. and help me. No matter what, <laughs> do I need to give you transport? Okay. Do I, what do I do? to make sure you come back mm, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he said, ha, I don't know. Let me see what I can do. I said, I am waiting at the reception <sighs> because they had closed. Now I'm on the reception of the, uh, the, the office. Of, of, of Stanchard. Yes, of, of the office, the branch has mm, been closed. Mm. Me with my car flash disk that has just scanty information. Oh, God. So anyways, he comes back at around 10 p.m. Mm. And then he opens for me the laptop mm. at the reception. Mm. So, which is not a very, you know, uh, but it's very basic, basic information. It's a, recep a receptionist uh, mm. laptop. Mm. So I put in my flash disk. I say my prayer. I say me and you today. <gasps> I am starting from scrap. And now I had to rely on my memory mm -hmm. and what I had researched. Ooh. I was exhausted. Wow. I was totally exhausted. I started working. My eyes were itching. I kept looking at the laptop. And I couldn't see so clearly anymore. Wow. I mean, midnight. One, One, two, three. I worked on that thing until five. In the morning? Yes. I stayed there with the security guards. Yay. I worked on it again. I sent the email to the boss. Because the deadline by, it said, by 6 a.m. Five. I sent and I told myself I it's given enough. it everything, my, mm. my blood, mm. my heart, mm. my soul, whatever comes out of it, I will accept it. Wow. 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 And I remember I was starting leave the next day. So I just went on my leave and I was like, well, deserve break. I deserve the sleep. So I went and nursed my pain. And <laughs> wounds. You know, Cynthia, you've got to tell us what happened with that particular <laughs> application you were making but i'm compelled to do this story of yours in two portions because you are such a person who every young person must listen to every person okay. in the corporate world <laughs> must listen to because then okay. the corporate world is very competitive yeah. and there are so many things you're throwing out that need to be picked here and there because these kind of things don't come very easily so i'm going to call for a break and then when we return we shall continue from where we have stop but uh your story is certainly one of those we must uh have and also share as widely as we can and possibly use for inspiring other young people so Thank please you. feel free to share every detail every good point that you must when we return we shall pick up from there Thank you. digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access use create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. 
Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten and a right for protection of minors among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back from that short break and I hope you are enjoying Cynthia's story. Cynthia is a very inspirational person. I can't stop listening to her story. And of course, for many of you who have just joined us now, you may not know who she is. She is currently the manager of corporate affairs at Standard Chartered Bank, and of course, a past president of the Public Relations Association in Uganda. And off the break, I was asking her, how did you get to that point? I mean, she has done so much in her life, and amazingly, through so many challenges that every young woman must listen to, anyone in the corporate world, really. I believe your story, uh, Cynthia, will impact somebody so seriously. And, uh, and thank not you just for corporate coming. World, actually. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's such an honor mm. to share because yeah. all of us live off inspiration. I'm so, so humbled uh, with yeah. your story. Yeah, it's a humbling story. Mm. I'm also humbled yeah. by life. <laughs> So we're talking about that first attempt of yours. Uh, you were making an application. You were very young at that time. You had just joined Standard Chartered Bank. Not really in a particular big position, but you were aiming for very big things and you were applying for a position. That's where we stopped. Yeah. Did you succeed getting that? Because that's the news I want to hear. So I'll tell you what. Yeah. I did eight solid interviews for that position for that position Ooh. before I got the role. Mm -hmm. It was the most strenuous of course. Uh, interview process. Uh, of course, I had ever experienced, but even today, I still think it ranks very high mm -hmm. on top there. Mm -hmm. Why is because uh, there was someone who was already volunteering in the role for, so they thought she was doing a good a job good already, job. Mm. and therefore she was a very likely candidate to wow. take the role. Wow. She had already been trained, and, uh, but she didn't have the job. She was volunteering from another division, but she was sort of like a protege. And so they were already grooming her for mm. the role. Mm. And she was such an amazing person. Uh, she was beautiful, light-skinned. Everything. Everything was in order. Yeah. Mm. And me, I was who you would sort of say. And of course, that position as well requires some bit of charm and I'm good looks. telling you. <laughs> so me, I was just... Uh, Kakoko Kaganda, uh -huh. if I'm to use uh -huh. that expression, uh -huh. you know, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so basic, mm. you know, mm. so, uh, but, um, and I remember uh, they called me for the first interview. I was like, oh my goodness, you mean, you know, I told you in part one what, uh, what we went through, I mean earlier what we went through. So uh, when they called me for the interview, now the, there was another hassle there. I didn't inform my manager. I didn't inform my friends. Remember when I tried to tell them I'm going to apply and they were discouraging me and I said, listen, no more sharing my story and I'm doing this. And I would share with just a few mm, like mm. people who speak into my life. So I went for the interview. And uh, what I would tell my colleagues down there, I would say, please uh, fill in for me for an hour. I'm coming. I'm coming back. And then I would run upstairs and go for the interview, sit Shame. through it. And then, you know, they kept calling me randomly. You know, this interview, I had to meet, you know, different panels all the way to the CEO, huh. you know, for the role. Mm. And I remember one particular time uh, when I was like, you know, seeing myself move, move, move up, you know, the, the interview chain. And they were saying now we were two, two left, two left. Hey! And the two left were <laughs> me and that other lady. The hold of the position. Yes. Mm. And uh, 
so I was thinking now I need to disclose to my manager because it's going to get tougher. Mm -hmm. They might invite me for an interview and I can't and I'm go. I'm busy, yeah. So I sort of mentioned to my manager that, listen, I applied for this job and I've been invited for an interview. Mm. They're like, I don't care. You know, there are lines, of queues, people. customers Ooh. in the banking hall. Ha. You cannot disappear. You know, find another way. So I remember one of the interviews, I actually told uh, my friend that please sit in for me. I have to go for this interview and I cannot miss it. Ooh. And they're like, no, but boss will kill me. I said, it, I don't care okay, at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. I am going. Mm -hmm. And I just left the place and I went. So I went for the interview. And uh, the one interesting thing I'll tell you out of this um, experience and i'm trying to be as very honest as i can be mm. is uh i remember when i met uh the ceo mm -hmm. and um then he was like ah oh, you know um i think you're very confident i think you're very competent you have done so well in the interviews you've come out with flying colors but the manager or the head of the division will have to make the final decision on who she feels she's comfortable, comfortable with. working with. Ooh. And I remember the words. Now my colleagues used to tell me that, ah, don't bother with those roles, you know, whatever. They will have someone they want and they will take on the role. And I remember sitting there <laughs> and I turned. Now I was no longer the interview, interviewee, mm, the mm, coward mm, who is mm. trying to impress. I know. I turned and I said, uh, excuse me, David. And I said, this is an, an international bank where you say it is about competence, Standards. Mm -hmm. you know, someone's ability. Mm. It is open and fair, you know, recruitment Absolutely. processes. Mm. I believe in everything this institution stands for. Uh -huh. I believe in this brand. Mm. I believe in the fairness, in the, you know, ability to grow everybody regardless. Ah. Why did you make me do seven interviews, interviews for the head to, to select decide. someone they are comfortable with? <laughs> I say, the head doesn't know me. I can see you are not. They have this. never worked <laughs> with me. Uh -huh. They don't know anything about me. Mm. So how do they assess their level of mm. comfort mm. with me? Hey, why didn't she just choose the person she's comfortable with from the very beginning? Unless this is a rubber stamp uh. process. Like I was told, actually, by wow. my colleagues before I came here. Wow. The man looked at me. Remember, a CEO of Standard Chartered Bank is a demigod. Of course. In our world. Yes. You understand? Yes. They are so, so senior. So, so senior. So, the man looks at me. I don't remember what he mumbled. But at that point, I was like, okay, I've come to the end anyway. Mm -hmm. I might as well speak my mind. My mind. And walk out of here. Confident. So I say, thank you very much for your mm -hmm. time, sir. Mm -hmm. It was a great honor to meet you. Wow. And uh, I'll go back to my That's desk leadership. and do my work. That's leadership. So Where you challenge I walked issues. out and yeah. I went back. But then, even then, mm. I was at peace. Mm -hmm. I knew I had given that role you are best. everything I could. Wow. So let the best man win. <laughs> In call, uh, no, uh, I did. Uh, I had put all my eggs there, out, and all your swords. So were I went out. back comfortably mm -hmm. and did my life. I didn't wow. even care. I knew I, I wouldn't get the job. Did anyway. you pray a little bit? Of course, I, I prayed think. every step of ah. the way. I do not go mm -hmm. for anything before mm. I pray. Mm. So, anyways, uh, and then uh, I remember I was driving home uh, one evening, and then they called me. And then I picked this call I didn't know, landline. And then the man said, hi, Cynthia, my name is Lawrence from HR. You know when you're a junior down there, you, you don't can even know who is up there. You can't even know who is up there. <laughs> <laughs> bank, like, you work in a certain organization, what? but you don't exactly relate mm, with them mm, very mm, often. Mm, so mm. he's like, I'm calling from HR. Wow. Uh, do you have a moment tomorrow at 11 hey. to come and pick up your appointment later? I remember wow. I was driving in Tinder. And my car fell in a, a ditch, in a <laughs> hole. There was a pothole. <laughs> Poo, and I stayed in that pothole. <laughs> so oh, I was like, mm -hmm. goodness, mm -hmm. thank you, mm -hmm. God. I remember I was just singing praises. Nobody God. said the God of the orphans. <laughs> I mean, uh, you cannot joke with that God. If an orphan prays, certainly. Yes. You who has a father, I think you can't compete. Yes. <laughs> So this was a done deal for you. Yes, mm -hmm. and I remember walking in there to receive my appointment letter. And my boss then gave me a World Cup speech I will never forget. <gasps> she actually told me, 
you know, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, ma'am, but you know me soon enough. Mm -hmm. And then she said, um, frankly speaking, uh, this other candidate is someone I've worked with. Mm. She's very good. She's mm. very knowledgeable. Mm. To be honest with you, I feel sad that she has not gotten this role. Yeah, she was being honest. Yes, she mm. was. She's a very straightforward mm. person. We mm. are very good friends today. Wow. And uh, she, she told me, you know, she's, uh, you know, I feel really bad. She's trained. Mm. She's competent. She's articulate. She knows the Everything. role. She doesn't need training. And honestly, I don't know you. So it's challenging for me. But well, you beat her in every interview. Wow. So congratulations. Wow. And wow. I said, thank you, ma'am. Indeed. Indeed. And I walked out. Wow. So here you are. Yeah. Recruited now as what? Corporate Affairs Officer. Officer. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. How did you get from that point? I'm looking at this manager now, Standard Chartered Bank, and I'm like, yeah. wow. So mm -hmm. my journey was quite interesting and I remember I was very agile. Mm -hmm. I took on so many projects where I was doing things across the region, not just East Africa, but Africa. So I would do like, I would volunteer, do newsletters, uh, support the business heads to do Africa wide things. And then uh, they gave me an opportunity to go work in the Gambia, uh, where I was actually head of corporate affairs, brand and marketing wow. for, for the Gambia. Uh, it was a short-term stint and then I, they started moving me around. I worked in Kenya, I worked in Tanzania, I worked in India. I was going oh. around doing short-term short stints term. as they trained mm. me. Mm. I, and I remember they gave me offers to work in uh, uh, Ghana and uh, to go back in the Gambia. <sighs> but now I was just getting into the family way mm -hmm. and I wanted to settle and down. And completing the other education. Probably you had I'd already finished. You had already now finished. I'd finished. Mm. And um, yeah, so it was one of those very, very um, lustrous uh, journeys Journey, of yeah. learning, mm -hmm. of continuous learning. But I'll tell you, I've not walked this journey on Alone. my own. Oh. I stood on shoulders of giants. Absolutely. Uh, you can't go far. I can imagine in that industry. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, you, you know, you have to make the right connections. You have to be emotionally intelligent. You have to be grounded. And yet you have to be very strong and very solid because in the kind of work you do, you are the person who speaks for the institution, mm -hmm. but also you are the person who, in a way, shapes the profiles That's very of the rich. people. And deep. So what mm. happens is your managers, including the CEO, rely on, on you. you to position them mm -hmm. to the external world. Wow. So that means you have to think on your feet all the time all in the terms time. of how you're positioning them, what they are saying, what they are not saying, how to manage crisis, how to manage reputation, how to make sure, you know, you know, you're doing things that sell the bank products and add to the bottom line in terms of revenue generation and so on and so forth. So what happens is, when people are more senior than you, and yet they have to rely on, on you, you, there's an intricate balance uh -huh. of power Ooh. because they can easily use you. And also, it's very easy for you to be... To let them down. Yes, mm. exactly. Mm. So it's very intricate. You're my boss, but you have to depend on me. Mm -hmm. And I am afraid of you. Mm, so mm. I might as well do everything you tell me to do. Ah, you understand? Without professionalism. Because you say I do. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So where do you draw the line between uh, managing the excesses, controlling and also finding a balance where you're not positioning one person and making them a larger than life demigod? In, and that is very impactful because I will tell you, I have seen people's careers transformed, their lives changed, them getting promotions, them growing out into bigger roles as a result of my role work. as a peer mm. and not just my role, their effort, of course, mm. and everybody, the institutions, brand and so yeah. many factors. Yeah. But it is that position because I've seen also very leading personalities who do not understand the importance of reputation management, the, imp the importance of PR and positioning to their role. And they think it's enough to just go and work like a donkey. Wow 
back there and nobody knows what you're doing mm. but mm. you're working so hard mm. Mm. and breaking bone mm. and nobody knows what you're doing no you feel underappreciated no. you feel like nobody uh, mm. you know understands what mm. you're doing mm. but it is because you're not doing and putting in place the right fundamentals to propel wow. you to the next level wow as wow. i'm sure honorable as a former mp you know firsthand the importance of publicity yeah. to your personal mm. brand mm. To your career, although we don't utilize it very well, yeah, yeah, yeah and, but, but it's mm. you can't underscore underscore the yeah. importance of it. Mm -hmm. Every single day, you see politicians positioning themselves, photos of every, Event. even when they cough, <laughs> you will see a photo of them. Oh, they yeah, cough. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, that's brand. Okay, that's, that's what you are management. saying. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. So wow. So this manager, at this point in life. I was reading about your profile and I was so humbled to know that you have been at it for 18 years. 20 actually. On 20 now. Yeah. And of course, for my audience, the women that we want to speak to and other people, we are like, yes. okay, let's invite Cynthia to tell us the journey of her life, but also to pick lessons for, from that sector for yeah. our young women that we want to dominate, spread out, you know, influence. The corporate world, I, I, I know you've been raising some of those points here yes. and there, but just a few lessons for, for, for my young woman out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first lesson I already mentioned, mm. know who you are. Mm -hmm. Discover yourself yes. continuously. Mm. Do not stop. Mm -hmm. Read books, inform yourself, be in the right spaces, be in the right rooms, invest in yourself. There's knowledge all over the internet mm. when you're showering. For Christ's sake, don't waste that time. If you're not doing something productive like praying in the shower, listen to an inspirational uh -huh. audio. Listen to somebody who adds value to, to your, your life. life. Mm. And also focus on the different facets of life. Mm. Mm. Your life is like several balls we are balancing in the uh -huh. air at every time. So you have the spiritual aspect, there's the financial aspect, mm. there's you know the social aspect. Mm. There are all these aspects, right? So your health and so on. You cannot afford, and the lesson I've learned is to focus on your career at the detriment of, of everything the else. Yes. Because soon enough you have problems and challenges mm. because your health will go, mm -hmm. you have back problems mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. oversitting, you have eyesight, eyesight problems, issues. you have all sorts of problems. Wow. So you have got to pay attention and be more intentional mm. in terms of having goals, mm -hmm. which is like, remember the advice I was given? If yeah. you don't pay attention to your social, uh, for instance, uh -huh. you wake up single, you could have been beautiful, and lonely. but time moves. And before you know it, you don't have children, you're not married because you didn't focus. So you have you, no you friend are to talk actually to. talking about balancing the wheel of life. Correct. We are always told balance your wheel of life here and there. Of course, I don't like asking about this question. You know, it's a bit personal, especially for women you are married, you know, who you are married to and all that. But basically, what we want to know is how you are managing and balancing those roles as well is important because for your kind of work, certainly you, you work up to nine o'clock, you work, I don't know, up to what time. How do you balance your life? But also, how are you raising the family, you know? I'll Some of the lessons what. we can share with as parents back and, and forth. I've spoken about this over the years in the different interviews I've done. Mm. But I'll tell you, there is no silver bullet to life. Ah. What I said previously, a couple of years ago, is not applicable today. Uh -huh. Because life is progressive. Uh -huh. Life changes, mm, you mm, know. Mm. My state of affairs five, ten years ago is not, is not my state today. of affairs today. And that is something I have come to appreciate about life. Ah. Life takes you on a journey. Mm -hmm. And it's how you move that journey that counts. Mm. As long as you have life, I feel that is the number one wealth we all have. Okay. So for me, really, it's not been a smooth journey. Mm -hmm. You get some wins and some losers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you laugh, mm -hmm. other times you, you cry. cry. Sometimes you celebrate, mm. sometimes you're on the floor. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? You're being very honest, actually. And you actually. should um, embrace. <laughs> I am a very honest person. <laughs> because then there is it's, not, it's neither there or there. You are telling us, it's a journey you keep discovering. And that's one thing I keep telling young people when mm. I'm mentoring them. Mm. I keep saying to young people, listen, you see my life. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. My sweat. And you don't know my pain. Mm. You don't see the whole mm. story mm. by seeing me mm. driving a car mm. or standing mm. or sitting on a television mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. You don't see the whole picture. So all you aspire for is, I want to be like Cynthia Mpanga. Ah. 
But who is she when you're not watching off the camera? Of course, it's been said that people only celebrate your win. They don't celebrate what you have gone through and how you have gotten there. They only want to see this success. And I have a big problem with people, especially us women, who sit there and tell people, you can do it. Mm. I did it. Mm. You, you two can do it. No, 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 no. Mm. I feel that narrative is so wrong and so discouraging everybody has their journey uh -huh. everybody has their destinies okay and everybody fights a battle you don't know about ah. so quit sitting in front of young people and telling them oh you know just get married to a rich man and your problems will be solved mm, mm, no mm, that's mm, not a solution mm, at mm, all mm -hmm. you get married to the richest man with the more highest education, with everything, and you'll be very and miserable. The, and and be, is it what <laughs> gets the gets the divorcing. Belinda gets? Yeah. I'm I'm telling you, yeah. it is no. There is no formula mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. I cannot sit here and lecture anyone about parenting. Oh. I can share a few tips of what worked for me. Okay. But even you might try my tricks, and they don't work for your <laughs> children. So all I can say is. We can share life stories and experiences and learn from a few yes. tips here and there. Mm -hmm. But we have to allow people to experiment under their own circumstances. Wow. My circumstances could be that I live a certain life. Um, I'm blessed to have a job that gives me a bit of financial well-being yeah. better than you. Mm. So you might not take your child to the same school as mine. Oh yeah, Their challenges will be different. Uh -huh. You might not afford a house help. Mm -hmm. But what can we both all of us do within in our spaces mm, of influence mm. and make the best of what we can do. So what are the fundamentals? Wow. For me, the fundamentals are really is we have all got to believe in a power that's larger than us. Mm. That power, whether positive or negative, there is a power in this world. No one is self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You cannot sit there and think you have it together because mm -hmm. you are who you are. I am self-made. Mm -hmm. I have it together. No, no, no. I have a business. Uh -huh. I can do it. No, you don't <laughs> push through walls and barriers of life on your own. Oh. There's a power that's pushing you. The question is, which power do are you, you pay allegiance to? Mm. to? That's very powerful. There's a positive power uh -huh. and the negative. The negative power, you will hear wow. this rich man uh, sacrifice their child, and he's put losing. them in, the mm. in a, uh, whatever story <laughs> building, and now they don't sleep at night. Wow. We've had those, wow. uh, mm. you know, tales. Mm. Mm. Or you have that power that believes in the goodness of humanity Nature. in a world mm. that enforces itself through togetherness this nature i rely on it without the shed and the air and the tree i would die we saw that firsthand in covid when we had to buy oxygen of millions mm, and millions mm. the air we take for granted is provided by something so you believe in a goodness in a power that creates beauty that and restores that helps us overcome spirituality in other words exactly everyone has to be spiritual evil mm. or good mm. and mm. if you're not grounded in one of those two you are lost you crash okay? yeah if you're grounded in that negative force you also have you don't look that spiritual uh, i'm very Cynthia. spiritual yeah uh -huh. i'm very spiritual <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's move forward in terms of uh, the lessons for parenting is what I was interested yes. in. Yes. One or two that has kept, because you are a busy woman. I'm and not. many of the people we are training <laughs> is really that life. Yes. Because you're coming into this profession. You're a professional woman. But yes. you're also a mother. You're a wife. You are a leader. You are everything. I call myself United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a combo of everything. Uh -huh. I have been a mother uh -huh. with babies, mm -hmm. trying to get to the other side, ah. I have been a single woman oh trying my. to be a married woman. The hustles and challenges are different. Yeah. I have been a married mm, woman. Mm. I have everything I have together. done. So I can speak to everybody I know. in their sphere mm, of mm, space mm. where they are wow, in life. Wow. Because let me tell you something. I went into motherhood and my first children, firstborn, are twins. Huh? You're a Nalongo. I'm a Nalongo. Wow. But I can tell you. I didn't have a mother. I, in my mother, I was born the only girl. So uh, I have two brothers, though I told you I have a, a wider family because my father was a polygamist. Mm. So I have so many siblings. Of course. But I will tell you, being going into motherhood as a young girl with twins, and I had n no experience raising Before. children. 
required me to now change the way I was looking at life, change the way I worked. It transformed every everything. facet of everything. my life. Everything. I mean, let me tell you something. Motherhood is the biggest, most rewarding sacrifice we make as mothers. As women. But mm. it is the most challenging thing we can ever do. And it never stops, it I'm never told. Stops. Even when the children are yeah, 50, yeah. you're still mothering mm. them. Mm. My mantra for parenting is we need to leave better children for the world mm. and not a better world for the children. Yeah, you can say that again. We need to leave better children for the world and not a better world mm. for our children. Uh -huh. what the do you world, mean? every single time, we have seen the world recreate itself from patterns. The 80s, we don't look like the 80s. Neither did the 80s look like the 60s. Neither did the buildings. Nothing from the 80s. Very few things still exist. Maybe things that are protected by the UN in terms of infrastructure <laughs> and looks from a cultural perspective. But everything re changes. Wow, recreates itself consistently. So what are you exactly saying to me? That we waste I should, so mm. much time running to, I don't know. Okay, the one that hurts me is stealing from everybody <laughs> to give trillions or billions to create buildings and buildings and cars and cars. Castles. Castles and castles. How much money or how many castles or oh, how many cars does one human being need, need oh. to be a valuable member of a community of the world and make a positive impact in this world? Wow. Do they need a car? Our children. So all the things we do for our children, oh, let me prepare it is this important. for my child. And let me, let mm. me first say this. Mm. Money is an enabler. Uh -huh. We need money. Mm. We should work and strive hard. Uh -huh. Money gives us options. Okay. There is nothing as terrible as being floored and having nothing to eat and looking up to people. We need money. Mm -hmm. Having said that, mm. to what point will you go? Will you kill the entire world? Will you kill everybody for you to grow all the wealth and own all the wealth in the world? And stock it away for your children. We have seen examples. And for me, the best example is the late Mobutu Seseseko. <laughs> because I watched that man so keenly. Mm -hmm. When his time came, came, he had half the gold, world gold yeah, reserves of course. in Switzerland. From the richest country with gold in, in the Congo. world. Mm. But he died and he was buried standing. Shay. All the global nations where he had kept his wealth and buildings, they Denied all clumped him. the wealth. Mm. They didn't even take it back mm. to Congo for mm. crying out loud. Mm. 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 So then the question is, did the children need him to plunder his own country to the extent that he did to enrich some nations? Okay. They did not. What they needed was that father being present, imparting the right knowledge, the right skills, and the right values mm -hmm. and attitude, mm -hmm. the right mindset in those children. Because Every one of us has opportunity to make something out of wow, this world. That's so powerful. So and you we have saying, our path. Mm, Your path might not be my saying, path. Mm. If you are the president, it's not exactly always follow that I will be the president. Or I have the capabilities wow. to be the president. Cynthia, I don't want to move before I conclude on something quick on your profile that I saw. But with that point, you are saying we should impact our children with values. What you put in. For them is what you get out to live a life not to stock away wealth you know and say i'm preparing my like I the say, world for the world give the children ah. but give them just enough okay and i think even the bible has stories like this we've seen examples all across the mm. world of examples of what you eat. i mean listen uh, and i remember you mentioned bill gates earlier and they were saying you know bill gates was the son was driving a very posh car compared to the father and uh, one time, I think Bill Gates made a line to buy a burger. And they said, but how can the wealthiest man. man be making a line to buy a burger <laughs> in a restaurant? Yes. And he said, you see, me, I'm a child who came from nothing. Ah. I made it. So I understand the value of money. Oh. I understand the importance of humility. Ah. My son, on the other hand, is a rich man's mm, child. son. Mm. He drives a, a more expensive car than me. Wow. He'll eat in the big, uh, most, you know, 
the best restaurants, but I know what it takes because I'm a poor, you know, <sighs> child. Well, I think that particular issue on parenting needs a better discussion because we struggle alone as we, as, a lot as women. But before we go, I heard you are, of course, doing a lot of charity. Yes. We need to speak about that. Yeah. And of course, you are the past president of the Public Relations Association Correct. in Uganda. I want to capture some of your best moments in that particular <laughs> practice of yours. Yeah, I, I know probably it's what is driving you. Your life is driving you to do that charity as well. Before we go to charity, some of your best moments in your industry. And those can help us pick lessons in there, one or two. Yeah. So in my industry, mm. uh, being of service mm -hmm. um, and leadership are the two things that I, I can really speak about. Um, I started volunteering at a very low level. I think I'm that kind of person who sort of <laughs> the underdog that always makes it. I've never had anything Homegrown. given to me mm. on a silver spoon, mm. so I don't know that whole concept. But uh, I still started a, as a committee member, mm, volunteered mm, throughout. Mm. It was not a paid role uh -huh. until I made it um, mm. into, you know, a secretary general of uh, the association. And then uh, at that point, everybody saw my abilities, abilities. and capabilities. Mm. And so I went in for the presidency and I managed to get through that. And I served as president of Public Relations Association of Uganda. It wasn't a simple thing it wasn't uh i was the youngest president ever yeah female uh i was the second female president from goretti masade who is now the ceo of icgu mm. but um it was also very humbling and a very learning uh experience and a lesson in servitude and ah, sacrifice of course because you literally you're not paid mm. but you give your heart your soul your, your best. everything mm. to serve mm. people mm. who are all better than you in of some course. way, mm -hmm. who are flamboyant, mm -hmm. who are well-educated. On top of are... your busy bank job. Yes. Wow. So it required really uh, being very focused, uh, prioritizing a lot, and also being very humble in terms of dealing with people, listening to so many dissenting views. It was one of the biggest uh, leadership lessons I've ever taken of in life. <laughs> I'm it expecting so, to so see you now in uh, Parliament or some other places in terms of leadership. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so then, yes, you broke barriers. Of course, second president in the, oh, that is leadership in uh, your, your yes. association. And now you are into charity, of course, impacting society. Can I society. just say this mm. very interesting yeah, thing? I quickly. remember I wasn't sure about being uh, standing for presidency for PROW. And I remember people having a conversation about me when I was present twice the first time they sat there and say we need someone senior who is you know influential who has got it together who leads you know a unit in the you know in their space yeah. you know they 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 are they can open doors they have political ties they have all these things and they were describing this person and i'm sitting there and i'm thinking oh interesting i've actually done everything to run this association as secretary general ah. but i don't cut the bill at all from the description of these people <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one ah. was people were uh, you know the members were in uh, our chat on WhatsApp group, and they were all discussing me like I wasn't on the chat group, saying, no, she's not yet ready. You know, she still has a long way to go this ah. one. You know, no, you know, she's she's not influential. You know, she's... <laughs> <laughs> and you had to take it in. Ah, uh, yeah. And wow. I was there absorbing everything. Mm. And I remember after I had all their views about me, I then wrote in a very calm way, and I said, I accept the nomination for presidency. Ah. And at that time, they had a The tables changed. The lion in me. Of course. I they had set the ground for you to fight. Ready a battle. To fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And I think all of us need to tap into mm -hmm. the lionesses mm -hmm. within, within us. us. Yeah. Because when people tell you you can't do something. Why not? You ask yourself. I had their views. They had their reasons. Oh. I had heard them loud and clear. Uh -huh. But I thought I was ready. 
and I had something to offer. Mm. And I don't believe leadership is something confined in, in someone. Certain experience. Like you have to tell me now, Cynthia, mm -hmm. you are a leader you are ready. for me to be a leader. No, that's not leadership. Leadership is everywhere. Leadership is everywhere. Mm. And I call myself a servant leader mm. because I honestly love to support work and help others grow help the world become a better, a better place. place yeah so me i'm a servant leader you do not have to tell me oh i have to be you know to crown me for me to be a leader <laughs> it's our understanding of what leadership is because exactly. other think it's about privilege exactly you know but it's about changing you know our environment Correct. and improving it so you yeah you know that, that for me going back okay um so I you shared, campaigned I coined mm. that through mm. uh, as you were talking yes. about you know my Very charity important. work mm. and i was talking about servantude uh -huh. of sorts uh again um i do a lot of charity work and uh, the one reason people <laughs> that's another lesson i want to talk I know. about people mm. always tell me that how can you work for 20 years literally in the same organization. organization it's outdated nobody does it anymore you know there are these books written around working four years and then you look for the other thing you show ambition a certain way and i've had so many conversations with people and i've been very intrigued mm, with people's mm, mindsets mm, mm. the first thing i think i want to say is about generalization mm -hmm. of situations and you know yeah what works for you should may not, not be my wow. reality mm, mm. it is okay for you to move jobs and jump from one place to another but who am i intri intricately as a person and i talked about knowing who you are oh yes i am a very loyal person mm -hmm. i'm loyal to a t if you give me the reason to be loyal I will be loyal. Mm, you understand? Mm, That's mm, my value mm, as a person. Mm, mm, mm. So if you feel that it works for you to jump from one place to another, I wish you the best. Yeah. But don't impose your values on me because someone wrote a book. Is this person, who are they to determine the pattern of life wow. for 7 billion people? Wow. Wow. Who, who determines <laughs> what is right and what is the trend? Can I set my own trend? You can. By continuing to be a loyal person in a world that mm. doesn't believe in mm. loyalty, mm. in a world that's lost its way. And for me, uh, you know, going back to charity, I'll go back to mm. why I was bringing mm. in the, the mm. question. When I do my role, part of my mandate is community work. Work here. Yeah. I handle sustainability. Mm -hmm. I have moved all across the country doing something I'm very passionate wow. about, mm. impacting the lives of others through a corporate job. Approach. Okay. The corporate job has finances. Already for that. It is enabling for me mm. to contribute mm. when I don't have my own personal finances ah. in making a difference mm. in something I believe in and tangibly see the impact firsthand. I see why you've taken long in that position. Of course. I am so <laughs> passionate about making a difference. I know I just ran 200 kilometers fundraising money ah. to support disadvantaged people the whole of May. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I am burnt out. I am tired, but I can tell you it every is worth single it. day, Sweat. I woke up to run 10 to 15 kilometers mm. because I had to achieve the 200 kilometers ah. but i had to work i had to run everything i'm doing i had to do my other things and i didn't find an excuse because Ooh. it is the end that justifies the, the mean. means and the goal mattered to me enough for wow. me to put my life on the line mm. sometimes i was running it at night at night 9 p.m very dangerous Up alone mm. but i ran you understand? Wow. So when I, I stay in a role, mm. even if I'm passed up for promotions, even if things don't seem like they are working out for you mm. who are watching mm. me, mm. I am fulfilled in the role that I'm doing because it helps me do what I desire to do. In fact, I remember at some point I used to say, God, you are so great. Mm. I get to actually do something I would have done for free at a pay. At a pay. Wow. That's how important wow. my job has been to me. Cynthia, we can chat on and on <laughs> yes. because you are so powerful and your story is very, very powerful. And of course, we celebrate you Thank at you. this point in time because of course you have won. 
and uh, your success is all over and we associate with your success. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was important for us was to pick some of those, you know, processes that led to this successful woman, because many are out there struggling on how to, you know, journey their own journeys. But I know from your story, certainly some people are going to pick quite a number of things. And I'm so, so delighted that you came. And I'm hoping that in our networks that we have, the women's work that we do, the leadership development that we do, that you could come along I'll and uh, continue privileged. raising young people, young women, and of course other women as we aim to spread across and, you know, ensure that women are dominating wherever they are like you are, you know, holding ground, spreading across, you know, increasing in numbers because we are convinced that if women are in these spaces, the world will change. The world will become Don't a better place. Don't forget you're talking to a mother of two sons as well. Absolutely. <laughs> and I am very confident with your story. A lot is changing around your sphere, and uh, that's the story we, we wanted to share today. So I'm so, so, so delighted and humbled that you were able to come. And for our viewer who's been with us up to this point, these are the stories that we want to bring to you, stories that mean something, exceptional women, persons that have walked these journeys and are bringing about change in their society. This has been uh, Cynthia Mpanga, who is the manager of social you know, corporate social affairs at Standard Chartered Bank. Which other better person to do that for us than, than herself? And of course, she does a lot more. She's a writer. She's a philanthropist. She is a leadership development. She's everything in one package that somebody could desire her child, a woman, to be. And she has been at it in terms of a journey. It's not been easy, but yes. She's here and, and overcome. <laughs> and overcome. <laughs> and uh, that's the story we want you to pick. Thank you so much for being here with us. Till we meet at another episode. Shalom.